Okay, so I went ahead and I finished up going around this dragon with the uh, Daffodil Yellow multi-surface paint from Folk Art. You still see a lot of the orange through, but you really want to. And uh, now I'm going to go over it with multi-surface uh, Bumblebee paint from Folk Art to lighten it up a little bit. Not completely, not as heavy as this, just to add some different color depths on a few parts of it. Focus mainly on the uh, the main body and the legs, tail, uh, neck, because again I'm going to be going over the wings with the uh, yellow color shift paint, flat a shimmer effect to those parts of the dragon, and the armor, underside armor, going from the neck all the way down. To the tail, I'll be using the orange color shift, which is an co orange color flash, or other orange flash, which I know that's a little bit of a purpley sort of reddish color to it, in addition to the orange. So it's a really cool paint line. I'm a big fan. Actually, blue flash is my favorite of all of the flash paints, all the color shift paints. Gives it, depending on what you're painting and what base colors you're using, you can give it anywhere from a, a, a bright blue to a purple to a to a red effect. It, it's just it's a really cool paint line. I'm gonna go over the wings a little bit, I guess. I guess this is making it look like a true fire dragon. This is actually a similar technique to what I use for doing phoenixes, except that's a little opposite. Usually when I'm painting a phoenix, I'll paint it a, uh, the darkest yellow I can find. And then uh, I go darker, or the lightest yellow I can find rather, then I go darker, I'll do a slightly darker yellow, then I'll do an orange, and then I'll do red on top. It's the opposite, but it's still a cool effect. If you'd like to watch another uh, <clears throat> tutorial video of mine, I do have a YouTube channel, but uh, I'll be honest, they're not great videos. I do have one coming out on uh, Millis Community Media's YouTube channel, where I'm painting a Reaper Miniature Gorma uh, from, the, from the base coat to finish. And that video, I think, has been time-lapsed to about 30 minutes. And that is actually one of the best miniatures I think I have ever painted. That's up there with the five-headed Mulder car dragon that I painted. Okay, so I went over this with the slightly lighter yellow. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm happy with it, the way it came out. So now I'm going to go over with some color shift paint in a few spots and then I'm going to touch up with um, fire opal for on the claws and uh, some of the spikes and um, touch up the ground cover. 
Try and shift this light a little bit. Hopefully this isn't like overpowering and you can see it okay. Oh no, he fell over. Very important to rinse your brush in between colors, in case you didn't uh, think of that. Because you don't want to blend your colors in your containers. So <clears throat> I'm going to be using Color Shift, Yellow Flash for the wings. This one I don't dry brush. I just kind of put on straight even coats. Try to be careful to not get it on any of the uh, wing structure, wing support structure. You know the the arm. Just trying to keep it on the membrane part of the wing to give it that the skin, the um, the thinner membrane appearance or illusion. At least that's my goal. I think it looks good. If you don't think it looks good, you can do it definitely do it differently on your own miniature. Another thing with the color flash paints, they're kind of like metallics. You usually want to save metallic paints towards the end because they're so overpowering. And um, they just don't look right as a base coat unless you're doing an entire model in metallics. I did, I did a um, Skylander Tree Rex model once. It's not a model, you know, Skylander Tree Rex, but I painted them up in all metallics. I did a black base coat on it first, and then I used uh, gunmetal gray over that. And then I used different shades of metallics. Uh, I don't have a picture of it on me, and I don't have it near me, actually. I, I, um, I, don't, I don't have it. I actually gave it away as a prize to my daughter's uh, elementary school a few years ago for some contest they were having. So... But it looked really cool, but all metallics. Keep in mind too, my painting style is very different from a lot of other people's, uh, other persons out there, other YouTubers and other instructors. Uh, people tend to develop their own style of artwork and miniature painting is no exception. So if you see something that you think is weird or you say, well, I've seen someone else do that differently, that's because we all develop our own techniques. And you will most likely develop your own techniques. If you stick with it. It's hard for you to tell. Did I make no? It's too bright. I think you can see the shif shimmer there a little bit from the color shift. Again, I'm gonna have to apologize for the poor quality and lighting on this video. I, it's something I really gotta work on. My mind has not really been on videos recently, so this was kind of a last-minute throw-together kind of thing. So I'm still gonna apologize for the poor quality. Next, I'm going to use the um, orange flash color shift paint. I'm going to go over the armor plating with that.
I prefer using flat brushes while I paint. Other people might prefer round. The only time I really use round brushes when I'm trying to do small dot details, like when I'm doing eyeballs or uh, maybe doing the claws. <clears throat> We'll say, well, the effects of this dragon are kind of cool. The way the colors come together, I really think he looks more like a lava dragon than a yellow dragon. Well, not really lava because it doesn't have the black, but I don't know. I, I prefer using the brown as the base coat over the orange for creating a yellow dragon. It's, but <clears throat> that's something you learn with painting, you know, you just you gotta experiment. I mean, you could watch as many videos as you want, but until you do it yourself, you're just not gonna, you're just not gonna know how it looks to you. So, I'm not quite done, but I'm getting there. Which is good because I may or may not be late for school right now. <laughs> All right, so I did, um, <clears throat> you'll notice the model keeps tipping over. It's because um, the tail on this particular model has come down a little bit further. So when I actually glue this to a base, um, I'll glue it down and flatten out this part onto a wooden base and then, or a plastic base, then it won't tip over like that. Uh, next I'm gonna use, uh, Fire Opal Treasure Gold paint, Treasure Gold Fire Opal. And I'm going to use that for the uh, claws and uh, some of the bone ridges. And actually, for this one, I'm going to use a smaller round detail brush. For my handy dandy 10 pack of Mod Podge detail brushes. That way, I'm not overpowering anything and having accidents with the wide brush. This this paint line is really cool, the Treasure Gold. I want to say they have something like 10 different colors now. Um, I really enjoy it. But again, it's a heavy metallic paint, so I just use it for like light details and um, Definitely towards the end. Though I have considered actually doing another five-headed dragon using exclusively metallics and treasure gold paint. I'll probably use brushed black metal as a base coat, which is a really cool paint. I had some here somewhere. It's off to the side. I'm not sure. And then using five or six different shades of this um, treasure gold paint to just... I, I can't... I can see it in my head, and I'm impressed with it just with how it looks in my head, so I may, I'll probably do that later this summer. This lighting is not great for me either. Sorry, normally the, the lighting in my videos is a little better than this. I just wasn't able to get to my normal location for this video.
Also, don't be discouraged if this takes you an hour or two or three because it's your first time. And I'm honestly rushing through this and I'm seeing things that I've done that I don't like. But I'm just trying to go over the basics for this. And I'll probably fix it up later, at a later date. And this will probably be going off to the folks at Plaid or the folks at Momocon. I haven't decided yet. And they can figure out what to do with them. I don't know if it's obvious on the video there, but I've been using, so when I shake up my paints, I just use the caps that the paints, that come with the paints. I don't squirt the paint into a different tray or onto another surface. I just feel like that's a waste of paint. When I can shake it up and it's right there, you know, why waste more paint than I need to? I teach a painting group and I have learned working with children that if you tell them to squirt a little bit out, they'll squirt it out till it overflows. So now I just try to teach them all to do it this way. Shake up the bottle, screw out the cap, set the bottle off to the side so you don't knock it over. Just use the cap as your tray. I'm actually going to do that a little bit too. So again, I'm sorry if you can't see all the detail that I'm working on. Normally, like I said, I have a different lighting setup, but making do. Do a little bit of blue, my super tiny detail brush for the eyes. You can use Peacock Blue. I just want to tap just a little bit of paint on the tip of that brush. It's so out of focus you can't even tell. Sorry about that. I was trying to show you. I just had a little dot of paint on there. Because that's all you need. Now I'll see if it can show up on there. If the blue shows up. I think I can see it a little. No. So both the Fire Dragon and the Silver Dragon are fun models to paint. They're small, they're detailed dragons. I believe Sandra Garrity sculpted both of them. I know she did the Fire Dragon. I'm not entirely positive on the Silver, but I believe she did. Yes, Sandra Garrity. It says on the bottom. And Sandra Garrity. She's actually a very nice lady. I've talked to her on Facebook a few times. Okay. All right, so I have the main parts of my dragon done because it looks pretty cool the way it came out to me. It looks more, it looks like a fire dragon to me. Um, um, I am going to go over the base a little bit with a light, lighter shade of brown. I'm actually going to use a lighter shade of uh, rust texture paint. Really enjoy using the uh, painted finishes line for base coating because um, they have little bits of texture in them. There's uh, two shades of rust, there's two shades of moss, there's two shades of concrete and it just adds a little bit of grit to the model and I just enjoy it. And 
and I'm going to use the flat brush that I use to paint most of the dragon for that. Again, this is going to be a dry brush. I'm just going to put a little bit on here. A little bit goes a long way in dry brushing. When I'm completely done with this dragon and I've let it sit for a couple hours to dry, what I'm going to do is, uh, and I feel like I'm, I didn't really do anything with the mouth, and I'll probably paint the tongue. Uh, when I'm done with this model, I'm going to take the same, I'm going to use Mod Podge Ultra, and I may or may not have mentioned it early in the video, I usually unscrew this when I'm painting anything, I think I mentioned for the base coat, but even any, you, when I'm doing any part of the, the painting, I usually take a couple of drops of this, two, three drops, into my cap, mix it up, and then I use that, and I feel like it really adds a layer of protection to the paint and keeps from chipping, and um, also when the model's completely dry, I'm going to take and use a wider brush, this is also a plaid brush, um, and I'm going to dip it right in the container. I've, I found that for miniature painting, it's not good to use the pump spray because that clogs up and it jams and it puts thick parts in some spots. So I just brush it right on and I'll brush it on to create a, a really strong seal. So um, it'll protect it from dust or an occasional splash of something. Someone spills something on it. If you're using these for gameplay especially, it's a good idea. You know what, I'm going to touch up the mouth real quick and then I'm going to call it, call it done. I'm going to use a slightly darker, I'm going to use a Madeira for the inside of the mouth. I'm going to use a really, I'm going to use that detail brush that I used earlier, a really small one. Nice dark red. And that is my, well, it's supposed to be a yellow dragon, but that is a fire dragon, painted as a fire dragon. And then this is the Reaper Manager Silver Dragon painted as a yellow dragon. Hope you enjoyed my painting video. Again, any questions, comments, you can feel free to email me at jollygoodgiant at gmail.com or message me on Instagram or Facebook. Thank you.